So with the core completed and the barrel in all place, that's all pretty much ready to run other than cobbing around it. Uh, but the next stage is to do the cob bench, the other mass bench. Um, but unfortunately this is going to have to be done in a few different stages because behind this wall is the bathroom and I want to get some of the heat into the bathroom because it's always a really cold room in this house so you know, it's nice having a warm bathroom. So what I'm going to do basically is cut a big hole in this wall and expose the bench into the bathroom but of course this being a really old complicated house it's not going to be quite that simple. So uh, first things first I'm going to have to take off the last of the socket hardware that'll be pretty straightforward. Then I'm going to have to cut the hole to roughly the size I want. Now the bathroom does extend the full length of this wall, but I'm only going to bring about as far as here because even we're going to remodel the bathroom eventually, and the bath and shower is going to be behind this, and it'll just massively complicate it if I'm you know, going to have uh, another layer of complexity with the, the back of the bench exposed. So I'm bringing it as far as here. The bench is going to come up to 16 inches, but that's from here, and that's the standard height of a sofa that's going to be comfortable to sit on. 15, 16 inches, so that'll probably be up to about here or so. So I'm gonna have to, I could just cut these out and just, you know, put a frame in, but what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna get some of this, pretty much the same material, cut these sections at a, what is it, this is 45 mil thick. So I'm gonna, if that's the size of the hole I want, I'm gonna bring it up 45 mil and cut there, so I can put a horizontal across and you know, give a little bit of support to these and then I'll put uprights button up against that underneath to act like a wedge and really hold all that in place. Other complicating factors are there's a skirting board down here so I'm going to have to cut through a section of that because I want to get as much of that exposed as I can um, rather than you know bring it up the little depth of the skirting board and this end there's the door frame as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Cut through the skirting board the other side. I'm not going to film that. The bathroom looks awful. You know, uh, it, much of a building site as this room does. And uh, so I'll cut through the skirting board and take that off. And then I'll drill a hole from this side at the edge of the door frame so I don't cut too far when the time comes. And then I'll just, yeah, uh, cut these out and then take them out. I'm hoping with a bit of sideways pressure at that point they'll come out pretty easily. And then cut the hole because I need to do all of that before I start um, work on the back wall of it because up to here it doesn't matter at all I could just use cob but I'm not going to I've got more brick than I actually needed uh, I overestimated how many we need so I'm going to use that brick to build a low wall and also because this is going to be heated bench I'm going to put a layer of insulation behind it to bring it up so that I'm not putting too much heat into this timber work here this side I'm going to leave it about an inch or so gap between the woodwork and the mass and then from the other side when it's all finished I'll just tuck some loose insulation into the gap that will be out of sight but we'll still seal that off quite nicely um, but still protect the woodwork from the bench and another potential thing of course is I need to put the insulation down onto this before I build the wall on top so I've got a couple of bags of clay stabilized perlite good to go um, and the other issue that'll go down up to about this sort of height, just a few inches, doesn't need a massive amount. And then I'm going to use uh, structural cob, which is this kind of stuff that's got the um, uh, the straw in it, good and strong, and bring it up to this height. Because there's no point wasting really nice attractive stone for the facade in an area that's never going to be seen. Um, so in fact I'll probably bring it up to this height, so I can uh, get a, a nice solid base to work on. Because... Um, It'd be really difficult if I put all the pipes in, which I'm itching to do, because if I was doing all the pipes in, I can run it. But if I put the pipes in, building this wall, stepping over and around the pipes is going to be really difficult. I'm knocking against them and so on. So I'm going to do it in sections. And the other issue is I actually have had to order two new sections of pipe because it's a slightly different layout from when I originally started planning this. Um, I haven't quite got the right sort of pipe, so I can't actually go through the chimney breast until they arrive. Um, so again, I'm on stop with that, but I want to get as much of this in as possible before they arrive, which will be next week. Um, so yeah, first things first, I'm gonna um, take yeah, make the hole first. So there's the cutout through to the bathroom. So the mass wall will be built against the back of that with a slight gap, and then insulated around, and that'll have a nice wooden frame on the other side of that wall. 
and we'll be able to hang towels and things on you know higher up on that wall and we'll have a nice warm bathroom so progress with the bench I have built this section out of brick to keep it really snug against that wall because there's going to be a duct coming through here and I've put some rock wool behind it to act as insulation between that and the stud work behind but this side of it where it's visible through to the bathroom the bit that's going to be exposed for the bathroom heater I've made it out of really nice stone but uh, that'll be visible from the other side eventually um, and yeah this bit is the only section that has been mortared in yet because I only found that the other day to fill that gap and it does actually key in here the slab that runs underneath this stone here keys into that brick wall so it is going up reasonably keyed in together so the whole lot isn't destabilized um, I've had to put quite a bit of um, uh, mortar cob against the back of it just to support the rocks because of course they got a, the flat face is facing the bathroom in there but they're underneath of course there are all sorts of shapes so I've had to use cob underneath it and that's been left a day or so and that's really stiffened up that could be built on top of now and bring it up to uh, bench height but I'm not going to the next job I'm going to do is I'm going to use stabilized clay perlite on the floor and fill in this section here and get that completed that's going to be really nice to get done and then I'm going to probably pour a little bit of um, just like a thermal cob so no um, no uh, fiber in that at all it'll just be clay and a little bit of sand just to bring that bottom section and then I'm going to put rocks on top of that and space that up to basically the bottom height of that pipe there because that's the absolute lowest point that the pipe is going to take because it's going to be a very slight uphill here maybe a quarter of an inch you know maybe four five ten mil across its entire length it'll go you know little jog that way all the way back up and that again will come up very slightly a tiny amount so yeah nothing's going to be lower than the height of that pipe so i can actually build up to that point now and i want to get this front wall starting because tomorrow the last piece of pipe arrives and because i'm ready to go through the chimney press with it now i can actually get the pipe all in and with a couple of very small additions to the uh, um, the, the the barrel in that area i can actually light this thing for the first time that'll be amazing so this morning i bought off the actual pipe to where that's going to go so you can see how close it is to the the, uh, the barrel so that's going to be really good now i'm trying to set that bottom angle there so i'll put this pipe on just as a temporary solution just so i can move it about more easily and yeah set the angle of that 90 degree there because that's going to come out to here and then there'll be a 45 in here 45 degree angle that will send it down that way so obviously this pipe if it was left in it'd be colliding with the pipe running out in that direction so it's only a temporary fix but while i was here now bearing in mind that all around that you can see there's quite a significant amount of gap all around that but still and it's only a moderately breezy day today look at this you can see the draw of the chimney and that's without any heat anything at all it's just you can see whichever way around to put it it's just drawing that right up and this is a fairly small piece of paper it's you know thinner than my finger and you can see the amount of drag on it the amount of suction on it just pulling that straight up there so yeah i think a mass heater the first time it's lit is notoriously difficult because it's got you know a cold mass or um, in our case there'll probably be a certain amount of exposed pipe still um, and it's very difficult to light apparently i don't think we're going to struggle with this because I mean, you can really feel the draw through that and as that gets sealed in more at the top there that's only going to increase unless we've got the pipes on of course that's going to be drawing through there through the whole system and drawing through that hole there um yeah that is amazing i'm really impressed now i have changed the layout slightly now in the event of moisture running down the pipe i've got the the male pipe the narrower pipe running into the female pipe socket so that if there was any condensation inside the pipe rather than dribbling out the join it'll run down inside the pipe and through the whole system but i've done the same thing at this end running in this direction so that yeah in fact the, the by following that orientation i could run it all the way around the bench and into here and it would work 
because this pipe fits inside that so I could run the whole lot the way around but one of the difficulties I've had is if I use um, right I'll show you on the T's actually that's the easiest thing to do so on the clean out T and there's going to be two of these side by side on the end here so that I've got really good clean out access for both runs of pipe both this one up here and the next one running up but these T's have got the cap fits beautifully on that because that's the you know that socket fits you know, sorry the cap fits on the narrower section of pipe which would be manufactured to fit in there but this wouldn't work I couldn't get the cap onto this because that would need to be a, a male section of pipe and have to be slightly narrower now my original plan was to just use a pipe crimping tool one of them to crimp the other end of one of these so I could have swapped the cap over and put it on there but when I've tried that in fact I'll show you where I've done it I've done it on here and it kind of works and it's fine if I've got a joint inside the middle of the mass that's got tape wrapped around it and then you know a couple of ton of cob it's absolutely fine you know it will fit in and give you a nice locating joint but if I was to try and put the cap on that even with a stove gasket it still doesn't give me a really nice clean fit so rather than potentially have problems further down the line with you know air leaking into it it's never going to leak out because this you know all draws the whole time if there was a leak it would be sucked in rather than gases being spread out into the room but um, to make these caps better to fit I'm going to do a T that way and there'll probably be a small run of pipe just a couple of inches long between them and there'll be a cap that end so they're really nice fitting they probably won't even need stove gaskets um, but it does mean that I've got to connect this onto this which is female to female which creates a problem for making a really good seal so instead of cutting it here which is where I need it so I'll rephrase that instead of cutting it there which is pretty much the pipe you know where I want that to fit I'm doing it here so it'll give me just a couple of centimeters on the end of this that I can use the pipe crimper to do the same as I have on that section of pipe there and then I can tape that and seal all that in with cob and it means that I've got really nice clean out caps with really good tight fitting um, tight fitting uh, uh, seals on both of these ends which will just make a lot less you know a lot of stress out of it and give me a much better job so for the sake of one little manipulation here to rearrange these a little bit no big deal the other thing I'm gonna have to do is manufacture a pipe to bridge this I haven't bought one I'm going to show you you can get adapters to do it but I can just use the section I've cut off cut it down a little bit further crimp both ends and they'll fit together tape together so it's all a little bit fiddly but we're actually on the home stretch and I'm hoping to get this thing lit tonight <laughs> 